This is Arctic's Freezer 34 cooler. And this is Arctic's new Freezer 35 cooler. Are things getting chillier? Welcome to Machines More. Today, Arctic is launching their next air cooler in their freezer family. I've tested the Freezer 34 in both single and dual fan configurations before. It's quite a good air cooler. And this update here brings about a fairly substantial set of upgrades that I'll share today. Arctic did provide the cooler for my independent testing. However, they have been apprised of the testing results prior to this video, and they don't have any influence over the review process. So a big thanks to them for helping make this review possible. So first off, there are four sub models in the Freezer 35 series. There's a Freezer 35 ARGB version and a Freezer 35 regular RGB version. And instead of providing hardware for both Intel and AM4 together, you have one model that comes with Intel LGA 1200 and 1700 hardware, and another one that comes with AM4 hardware. This distinction does result in lower hardware costs that are then passed on to the consumer typically. And for a lot of people, this is more beneficial since if you do end up switching sockets later on, you might get a new cooler altogether. Though for some, it does limit the versatility of the cooler if you want the ability to switch between Intel and AMD seamlessly. The Freezer 34 features a more conventional rectangular heatsink. It's squarish and it's quite sharp on the edges of the fan facing sides to disperse the airflow going into the heatsink. Now the Freezer 35 retains that suitability as a survival tool, but that is only on the fan facing side. The heatsink has been expanded on the other side up to about six centimeters at the thickest end, but that is not consistent. The center of the heatsink is a thinner channel here. And presumably this is done to match the pressure characteristics of the 120 millimeter fan that it's paired with. Seeing that airflow is higher along the outer perimeter of a fan, it's notched away at certain points and then it kind of slopes outwards like this to get thicker progressively. And this optimizes the heat exchange by taking maximum advantage of that surface area on the heat fins. It's got four dual loop heat pipes, similar to the Freezer 34. And while the direct contact heat pipes here with this base plate, it's a little bit larger than with the Freezer 34. It's still notably smaller than the AM4 IHS. And this doesn't seem to negatively impact the performance, but it does look a little bit odd after installation. Another notable change here is the switch from the Bionics fan to the P12 RGB or the ARGB. This is a fan that's generally well liked. The new version and the design performs well, so I think it's a welcome change overall since it is quite a good cooler fan. One thing though, it's not a standalone retail version of the fan. Instead, the fan assembly is enclosed in this shroud, which doubles as the fan's frame, as well as the heatsink cover. And aesthetically, this shroud is a very bold choice. Integrated into the plastic frame is the clip mechanism that attaches the fan to the heatsink and the user just has to push the shroud over the heatsink and the clips on the shroud will engage into a groove on the heatsink. There's no fan clips required. On the top of the shroud, an Arctic logo is present. And with the shroud, the total height of the cooler measured in at 156.5 millimeters for me. The heatsink mass was 577 grams. The fan also doesn't have the PST daisy chain cable you'd find on a retail version of the P12. It's not really needed here since it's a single fan cooler, but the five volt ARGB cable on the test sample that I received does allow for the ARGB connection to be bridged to another downstream ARGB device. The cooler does come with Arctic's new MX-5 paste, which is a nice touch since this is quite a good paste, even though it's a little more tricky to apply due to the thicker viscosity of the paste, but uh, as opposed to the 34, where the instructions stipulate application of the paste to the base plate directly, the Freezer 35 suggests applying to the CPU. Those are the main features. The inclusions otherwise are quite simple. It really is a simple package, and I think especially if this is your first time mounting an air cooler, you'll find it much easier to navigate the hardware with the way the Arctic has split up the AM4 and the Intel CPU SKUs. Installation is fairly simple on the AM4 version I tested. The stock AM4 backplate is used along with the mounting bars and the spacers that you'll get and you will just need to take off the fan and the shroud to access the mounting screws. One thing you will have to decide though is which way you wanna orient your airflow. 
since that's actually gonna govern how you install the heatsink. The fan can only be placed on one side of the heatsink. Essentially, you have to rotate the entire assembly to fit your desired orientation. And since I did test in my NR200 system in a rear intake orientation, that meant the Arctic logo was unfortunately upside down. I didn't have any clearance issues even with a mini ITX motherboard. So let's take a quick look at the thermal performance of the unit. The Freezer 34 was tested in the 5 for Ryzen 5 test I did, and a single fan tower like this is really more suited to a CPU like a Ryzen 5. So I'm testing again with the 5600X. Here it's locked to the same test parameters as before of 1.25 volts and 4.5 gigahertz. And taking a look at the noise normalized performance at the noise normalized level of about three decibels, above the noise floor, the cooler fan does spin almost to the max. It's a little bit slower than the Bionics on the Freezer 34, which could go a little faster at the same noise level, but it is a different fan after all with different characteristics. At this level, the new Freezer 35 pulls ahead of the Freezer 34 single quite a bit for an almost two degree improvement. It doesn't quite catch the Freezer 34 Duo, but it comes awfully close in performance to it. But that there being a push-pull setup, which still has a tiny advantage there. And when we take a look at the performance at 100% fan speed inside the case, there is a degree or so of headroom left. The fan topped out at 1700 RPM for me, which increased noise by roughly a decibel or so. Now I've documented fan noise for the PE12 ARGB in the review, which I'll just link up here. So if you're curious about how the fan sounds, I'd take a quick look there. Now, despite not covering the entire IHS for the AMD CPU, it does compete quite well against similar products on the market. The performance here is definitely in line with the Mugen 5 from Scythe and Cooler Master's Hyper 2N2 Evo V2. I think this one is the more polished looking unit though, because it's complete with the heatsink cover and the option for lighting. Based on the performance results, it's more suited for a gaming build or all core usage with say a typical six core, 65 to 95 watt TDB CPU. And with the limitation for the top end speed of the cooler fan, I would be hesitant to recommend it for something like an i7 or a 5800X and above level of power draw especially if you regularly find yourself running a heavy multi-core workload. This is a pretty good cooler, but there are a few areas of potential improvement here that I would recommend, and that's uh, related to the fan shroud. It looks nice, but for one, the fan shroud, it was a little bit difficult to take off. And if you're working with this in a case, such as to remove it or to move it to a different build, the gripping point where you need to pull, uh, it's so small that it's gonna be really tough. The plastic itself is not very flexy, so having to bend it outwards to remove the fan, even for you know getting ready for installing it outside of the case, it took a little bit more force than I anticipated. And it made me a little nervous since I didn't want to accidentally break this plastic, but ultimately it held up okay. Now, I think a longer gripping point here for our fingers is uh, would be convenient for the user. And while the P12 fan was absolutely fine, if user wants to do a fan swap, it's not really feasible with this integrated shroud assembly. And I have seen some shrouds where the 120 millimeter fan attaches with screws. And a design like that would have allowed the use of a regular P12 ARGB here included in the package while still giving the end user a bit more flexibility. And on that note, unfortunately in the current setup, there is no way to add a second P12 fan. There's simply no way to either use fan clips or there's no groove cut out for another part of the shroud. And if you could add a second P12 fan to the ensemble, that would give the cooler a bit more oomph, but um, I guess the only way you can do that is with a zip tie, but yeah. Lastly, to avoid the upside down logo, which might bother some if you're running the fan that way, maybe just a sticker to allow the user to apply after installation would be a nice touch. But overall, the performance is there. This cooler has a bold look, good stock fan, and the cooler height isn't obnoxiously tall. And a lot of you will appreciate the lighting, which is the strength of this unit when you compare it to similar price competition. So all in all, it is a very attractive package. Pricing wise, a regular RGB version carries a 49 US dollar MSRP. The ARGB version will set you back about 53, and that is right in the ballpark of the Freezer 34 singles pricing. And since it performs quite close to even the more expensive duo version of the 34 cooler, I'd recommend going with the new Freezer 35 unless you anticipate needing the extra headroom from having two fans and a higher max fan speed. So that'll do it for this review. I hope you enjoyed it. Give a like if so, subscribe if you haven't already. Links down below. Thanks for watching today.